How's it going everybody? Ryan here from Minus the Gym. And lately I've been doing a lot of primal movement. Specifically, I'm following a program called Animal Flow and I found it to be really beneficial for my mobility and my core strength. So I wanted to share with you guys a primal movement beginner flow, which is basically just a handful of positions and movements that you can follow to improve your mobility and core strength as well. First, everyone's favorite part to skip, the warm-up. But I don't recommend skipping it, especially the wrists. What I recommend doing is spending about 30 to 60 seconds doing these wrist circles, then one minute with your hands flat on the floor like this, palms down, and do what's called a hyperextension stretch of the wrists. I do this by simply leaning forward until I feel a nice deep stretch in the wrists. Then after that, you wanna spend one minute doing wrist flexion stretching. And you accomplish this by placing the backs of your hands flat on the floor. And you wanna start leaning kind of backwards so that your arms are leaning over the hands. Then I like to stretch each individual finger. And I do this by placing my hands palms down flat on the floor and raising one finger at a time, making sure the other fingers remain flat on the floor. And then I'm all done with my hand and wrist warm up and it's time to work on positions and movements. So let's take a look at those. Start off in this six point baby crawl position with toes, knees, and hands on the floor. And you want your hands to be just directly below your shoulders. Now what you wanna do here is press hard into the floor to protract your scapula, meaning shoulder blades should move apart because you're pressing down, and lift the knees just slightly off the ground. There should only be about an inch or so between your knees and the floor. This is called static beast. When done properly, you should feel that you're really activating your core to lift up those knees. Now from the static beast position, so I'm gonna get into that with my knees off the floor, what I'm now going to do is walk my hands out and lean my hips backwards, keeping my knees just off the floor in what's called loaded beast. Now this is called loaded because you're loaded with potential energy here. And what that means is the stretch that you're doing with your arms, with your hands flat on the floor, allows you to unload and propel yourself forward into a reach like this. Now we'll do more with reaches in a second, but I'm gonna go back to loaded beast here so you can just see what it's like. It's like child's pose, but with your knees off the floor. Now what we're gonna do is start off in static beast get down into loaded beast and we do that by walking the hands out and then dropping those hips down and back kind of widening the knees and we're going to come forward but raise one knee my right side to my right arm and then go back to loaded beast and again unload forward reaching my left knee now to my left arm and then come back i'm going to go ahead and repeat that and I'm gonna do right side again and this is called beast reach specifically a right side beast reach and then I will repeat again to show you left side beast reach. Now I'd like to pause here and just mention that when you're in this forward reaching position, it is kind of reminiscent of a planche lean because your shoulders are leaning out in front of your hands. So this will put a lot of load, a lot of stress on the wrists and the shoulders. So if this is difficult at first, don't worry about it. You will get used to it as you practice and build the strength. And now I will return back to Loaded Beast. And next, we're gonna take a look at a different unload exercise. So let's get first into Static Beast by activating the core and shoulders, bring up those knees. And now Loaded Beast, leaning the hips back, knees off the floor. And we're gonna do what's called Wave Unload. So we're gonna come up into a pike position like this. And what you're gonna do is move the heels up and then the hips forward, then retract the scapula and then look up at the ceiling. That was the wave, now we're going to reverse the wave by looking down, protracting the scapula, moving the hips up and back, and then dropping the heels down. That is wave unload, and as you practice this, you will find that you can become smoother at it, and it actually feels really good to practice this motion, so enjoy it. Next, we're going to change things up from Beast and work on a new static position. So sit with your hands right next to your hips, fingers pointing backwards, and then press down into the floor to lift your butt up off the floor. Your scapula should be depressed, meaning your shoulders are moving down. And you can notice here I'm moving my butt back and forth just to find the right position where I feel comfortable. And this is Static Crab. 
This is one of the fundamental positions like beasts, so make sure you practice it a lot and get used to it because a lot of the other movements will start in this position. Now at this point, it's good to start practicing contralateral lifts. So go ahead and get into crab position. And what you wanna do here is lift, for example, your left foot and right hand off the floor. What you'll notice when you do these contralateral lifts, if you look here, I'm leaning slightly to the left. So the side where you lift the foot off the floor you're going to have to lean towards that side if you want stability, and that's normal, so make sure you keep that in mind when you work on this. Also, make sure you're pressing hard into the floor so you're depressing your shoulder blades, meaning your shoulders should be moved down away from your ears. Of course, make sure you work both sides, so place your hand and foot down and then raise the other two. Now I'm doing right foot, left hand, and holding that position. And just hold each one for a few seconds, place it down, and then switch to practice. Aside from doing these contralateral lifts in crab, you'll also want to work on them in the beast position as well. Okay, and the reason for this is other movements are going to start with these lifts along with traveling. So if you want to travel from these basic static positions like beast or crab, it will also involve contralateral lifts. Once you practice those a bit, it's time to work on what's called under switches. And this is an under switch. Notice that I just switched between beast and crab almost seamlessly. And the way that starts is with a contralateral lift. So watch carefully here. I'm about to lift my left foot and right hand. And when I do that, you're gonna see the right hand cross over above and my left foot swung through underneath. And that landed me in beast. I'll go ahead and put this next under switch in slow motion so you can see better what's happening. Notice left foot swings under, right arm is crossing around the top, and then I put them both down simultaneously into crab position. Practice this under switch movement a lot because it's used quite commonly in primal movement and the animal flow program. And it's great for switching between beast and crab, but also it's just good exercise. It really does just feel good to practice this. Another thing that's really important to mention is don't worry about switching to a certain placement like rotating 180 degrees or facing a certain direction. Just make sure you land properly in crab or beast. Don't worry about how many degrees you rotate. Next, we'll look at crab reach. So start off in a static crab, raise your right hand up straight in front of your face, looking straight ahead, then raise the hips up and open the hips as you come up into a three-point bridge looking up at the ceiling with your hand right in front of your face. Now, as long as this feels comfortable and there's no pain in your shoulders or anything, go ahead and continue to reach around your head, following your hand with your head, and open those hips a little more into this position. Then return back to the starting position and drop the hand to the floor back to static crab. Now I know that's a lot to absorb, so let's do it again, this time left side. So we're gonna go ahead and raise the left hand off the floor while in crab position. Left hand is in front of your face, eyes on the horizon. Raise and open those hips, bringing the hand up, following them with your eyes, and then continue to follow your hand around your head, opening the hips even more. And once you're in this position, start uh, returning back to the starting position by dropping the hips, swinging the arm back, following the hand with your eyes, and then returning your hand to the floor. Now this took me a lot of practice and I'm still working on it, but I have gotten a lot smoother. So as you work on this, you don't have to pause at all those points. You can try to smoothen out this move and even speed it up so it looks and feels a lot better. And this is really one of my favorite animal flow exercises so far. And now we're going to learn a third fundamental position in this video, and that's this position called ape. It's really quite simple. You get into a deep squat, heels down flat, hips low, chest proud, and looking straight ahead at the horizon. This is ape position. And as simple as it is, it's really not that easy. If you have trouble getting into a deep squat, you can hold on to a door frame or something sturdy like that to work on your deep squat every day and night and gradually your flexibility will improve. Once you're able to get comfortable in the ape position for a while, I'd say 30 or 60 seconds, you can start working on the reaches. So first get into ape and what you're going to do is reach forward. Your palms should be facing outwards so your arms are externally rotated, heels flat on the floor, head tucked between your shoulders and that's deep ape reach. And what's cool is that from deep ape reach you can just raise up on your toes open at the hips and put your arms outstretched to the sides with palms facing up and this is standing ape reach 
And what I really like is how opposite these are. Standing ape reach is very open, so you're stretching the chest and the hips. But then deep ape reach, you close up and you really stretch the back. So practice switching between these two positions. And these are the two reaches that are associated with the ape position. All right, you've learned a lot. You've probably got to practice a lot of it, but here is a beginner flow that you can follow along with me and learn how to do. So I start off by getting into Static Beast. Come back into Loaded Beast. Up into Wave Unload. Wave comes forward. Feel a good stretch. Reverse the wave. And then come back down to Loaded Beast. Forward, right, Beast Reach. Back to Loaded Beast. Forward to left side, Beast Reach. Back to Loaded Beast. Slide into beast, right leg under switch, tap, back to beast, left leg under switch, hold crab. Now right side, crab reach, hold, and return to crab. Now left side, crab reach, and hold, return to crab. Then left leg under switch to beast, set ape, Deep ape reach and hold. Up to standing ape reach and hold. Back to deep ape reach. And then finish with static beast. And you're done. Now I realize that's a lot, so let's do it again together. So start off in static beast. Walk the hands out, back into Loaded Beast. Up into Wave Unload. Wave forward. Pause. And reverse the wave. Down into Loaded Beast. Forward right side Beast Reach. And back to Loaded Beast. Forward left side Beast Reach. And back to Loaded Beast. Forward to Static Beast, right leg under switch tap, back to Beast, left leg under switch hold crab, right side crab reach, hold, and return to crab. Left side crab reach, hold, and return to crab. Left leg under switch, hold Beast, set Ape. Deep Ape Reach and Hold. Up to Standing Ape Reach, Hold. And return to Deep Ape Reach. Finishing with Static Beast. And there you go. How about one more time for the cheap seats, all right, why not? Start off in Static Beast, knees off the floor. Step it out into Loaded Beast. And up you go to wave, wave unload, wave forward, hold, and reverse the wave. Then back down into loaded beast. Forward, right side beast reach, back to loaded beast. Forward, left side beast reach, and back to loaded beast. Slide forward to static beast. Right leg under switch, tap, right back to beast. Left leg under switch, hold crab. And now right arm up, you're gonna do right side crab reach and hold and return to crab. Left side crab reach, hold and return to crab. Left leg under switch to beast Set ape, deep ape reach and hold. Up to standing ape reach and hold. Back down to deep ape reach and finish with static beast. So that is a primal movement beginner flow. And if it doesn't feel very beginner to you, like it feels kind of difficult, that's actually a good thing, all right? That's an opportunity for improvement. 
So any positions or movements that I showed you in this video that are difficult, make sure you work on them frequently. I'm talking like three, four, even five times a week, and you will gradually improve your mobility, stability, and core strength to do the movements and positions. You can also do additional stretching and mobility work to help with the movements. For example, like I mentioned with ape, if you can't get into that deep squat, what you can do is do other deep squat stretches throughout the week. I recommend holding on to something sturdy like a door frame, for instance, and just going into as deep of a squat as you comfortably can and holding that position for at least a minute, uh, maybe do a, a couple sets of it every morning and night, and you will see improvement gradually as days go by. Again, the program that I follow is called Animal Flow. It's made by Mike Fitch of Global Body Weight Training. I will put a link down below if you want to check out his program where you can buy it if you want to actually follow it. But I'm currently on level two, all right? And the movements I showed you in this video were all from level one. So as I solidify my level two movements, I will make more videos and show you more bits and pieces of Animal Flow or Primal Movement so you can start connecting these exercises and making your own flows. All right, I need to be somewhere in about 30 minutes, so I gotta get going. I apologize if this is a little rushed, but thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to drop a like, and of course, subscribe if you haven't already. All right, and I will see you in the next video. Talk to you later.